Hello, everyone. And um, I was I was planning to do um, a Twitch video this morning, which I did um, on the sale from Jebada. Now, um, I think I streamed about two hours on, on the Twitch channel, which I'll put a link below here. But for some reason, or actually not for some reason, Twitch, I didn't know this, Twitch doesn't save your past broadcasts. And I didn't record what I did. So if you saw it, you were lucky. If you didn't, then it's gone forever. However, I did want to give a small um, recap about the work this morning um, on, on the sale because it was really kind of exciting. Uh, and so I wanted to, to, to uh, post a brief uh, video on YouTube to, to share with, uh, with you all uh, what went on. So I'm also using this new um, tool, which is called OBS. Uh, it's open source and uh, it's now what I'm using to record this video. So this is the first time, so let's hope this works. And it's also what I use to stream to Twitch, uh, where you'll find me under the name Ontakra Gueke. So my, my, like my Twitter handle. So let's see if this, uh, if I can now switch actually to, uh, to screen sharing. All right, this seems to work. All right, so uh, the Jibo Auto Sale is a text, here it is. Um, it's a text that I've wanted to work on for a long time. Um, it's uh, currently in the Cairo Museum. Um, and f I, I got like a picture of this maybe two or three years ago from, uh, uh, from a friend uh, who was then uh, working in the Cairo, Robin saint Bos at the IFAO. And uh, also another friend of mine, colleague Dobrochna Zielinska, had made uh, uh, a handwritten transcription from this text, also in the museum. But Dobrochna doesn't read Old Nubian. She's an uh, art historian and iconographist. And um, Robin doesn't so either. And the photograph was really bad because there was a huge flash and it wasn't well lit. So for a long time, I really couldn't really, you know, do anything about this text until, um, well, at least until I thought I went to Cairo myself and to look at the text myself. Then I went to the museum and it wasn't there anymore. But somehow it has popped up again uh, because on Twitter, a Japanese visitor to the museum posted pictures, the pictures that you're seeing right here, um, of, this, uh, of this document. Um, asking what language it was. And then So Miyagawa, uh, a Japanese colleague, saw the tweet, said, hey, this is Old Nubian. And then because he hashtagged it Old Nubian, I, I found it on Twitter. And <clears throat> I wrote to the, um, to the Japanese original poster. It's like, can you send me the photographs? And, and they did. So from those photographs, I'm now working on thanks to Twitter. Um, so here you have it. And fortunately they made a lot of pictures and they're all really good. So like, you know, there's a flash here, but it's okay because I have the middle piece here and then there's a whole overview and there's the top and, you know, a side view. So this is really fantastic material, even though we don't have one big overview shot. Um, the only thing that you see here is the, the last part is a little bit unclear, but this is like the list of, um, witnesses. So it's not the most important part of the, of the document. So the main, um, the main thing that is, let me just close these things because they give like signals and everything. Um, the main, uh, uh, uh part of the text uh, deals with a land sale. And so I have been struggling with this beginning for such a long time. So it starts with this opening sequence um, in which land is sold from someone to someone else. Sorry, I have the hiccups because I just ate a small sandwich. Um, this is followed by a curse, which is a really fun curse and I'll show it to you in a bit. Then we have the invocation of the Holy Trinity um, up to here. First in Greek, then in Old Nubian. Then we have a whole list of uh, functionaries. So like who was, um, until where, until here, 
who was king when, uh, so Joel was king, uh, Jesus Sony was Ngonan and so on, uh, Isaac was Shunga. Um, and, and especially this word Ngonan was very unclear to me until today. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how we figured it out. And then we have another part of the sale um, up to here, in which again land is switching hands between people. And then we have the final part is the list of um, Matarigu, the, the witnesses. And then probably the last part is the signature of the scribe and his payment. Now, uh, let, let's first go to the, to the Golan part, because this is fun too. So I had forgotten that there is a King Joel in this text, because it's been such a long time that I, long, long time ago that I worked on it. But recently, for those who have been following my channel, I've been working on the text from Tamit, the inscription of Tamit, which also mentions a King Joel. Now, it appears that also other people already made this relation because uh, in a, an article by um, Giovanni Ruffini and Adam Weitar in uh, Nubian Voices, they already make the link between, um, between the Tamit text, if I'm not mistaken, and this land sale. Now, moreover, they link these two texts, both featuring King Joel, to a, um, sorry, uh, to, uh, to uh, another land sale from Qasr Ibrim, which is this one. Um, which, as you can see here, also mentions a King Joel. And then the fourth text that we have mentioning King Joel is this uh, inscription from Abu Hoda, first published by Griffith, and uh, I showed the picture the other time, this one, which also has King Joel right here, um, but for which we don't really know whether this is the right transcription. Right, because it's made by Griffith, we didn't understand the language very well, but I'm really going to hunt down these two photographs and see if we can see more of this text. Um, so what is so fascinating is that when I figured out that uh, Ruffini and, and Weiter had already written about, you know, King Joel in this inscription, I was like, well, maybe the other land sale from Kassir Bream can help me understand the, pro the rest of the protocol. Um, because uh, the protocol is is something that gives you an indication about the date, right? So like this, this person was king, this was Queen Mother, this was, he was the Songhoj of, of Nobedia and so on. Um, and so I decided to have a closer look at this text and its edition by uh, Giovanni in, um, in this book, The Bishop, the Eparch and the King, which is the fourth volume of Kasser Ibrim documents in Old Nubian. Um, and lo and behold, uh, it works. So it, it was amazing. So we have King Joel, uh, who is king, uh, the king of Dotawo, and then we have here Yesu Soni Ngonana Inen. So you, Yesu Soni, so this is the this is the sacred abbreviation, sacred name of Jesus. Yesu Soni, um, basically loved by Jesus. Uh, this would be a, a paraphrase. Um, who is Ngonen. Now, um, tada, it is also in this text. Let's see, where is it? Here. So, first thing, we have the name. It was not so clear in the beginning. I thought this was a kappa. And this thing was not very clear either um, on what was going on. Um, I thought it was a kappa, Omicron, maybe this is a mu or something. But when you know that it's Jesus Sony, it's super obvious, right? You know, we have a Yota here. Sigma, beautiful, R stroke here, an Omicron stroke. This is clearly a nu. And then we have here kind of squished part of an eta. Yeah, we have the name. It's the same queen mother, so same period. Um, then obviously we need to have Ngonen. Now I was looking at this thing and I thought, okay, so, so the alpha is, is clear, yeah? Well, we have also clearly nu, we have clearly epsilon. We have clearly another nu right here. But then what's going on here? 
a smudge. I actually, first I thought maybe this is a Yota and Alpha because I didn't know if the smudge was a smudge or ink. So I was like, what? And maybe I thought this was a P. What the hell? And then maybe some letters here. No. Now that we have the name, then we can also read. So this is the stupid thing. Was you know what it says? It shows. Clearly, Angma here. Omicron totally gone. And this looks like a squished new. And this scribe is a bit messy, right? He squishes things. Here, look at this. Papasi. Um, look at this. Yota squished. Oh, squished in between. So fixed and um, if you look at the list in the protocol let's get rid of these uh, i made a little list here this is the protocol of our jebada sale that we're working on this is the protocol of the the cassiri bream sale that giovanni published yoel is king yoel is king of the tavo yesusoni is queen mother yesusoni is queen mother isaki is shunga we don't know what the shung is isagi is shung Kodi is Suntue, but here Kodi is Otnyori Dauria, the big, I don't know. Um, we have a Durari who is not here, we have a Mukut here that's not there, but we have Abamerki who is the uh, Bishop of Ibrim and Abamerki here also who is Bishop of Ibrim and Abamerki also who appears in our inscription from Tamit. And we have a Somoj. Ekshi, who is called here, uh, who is here, uh, another person, presumably Teddyeri, Teddyeri. So look how beautiful these two overlap, right? So this is clearly the same period. Um, and, and this at the station here helps us reconstruct what is happening there. So this was the first wonderful find of the day, um, finishing the protocol. Now, then the beginning. The beginning is at first sight a mess. Like ini para ingaka ini anui jana ai sewamika deno. Ain inga seweka ini lio newarika tiselo. So okay, we have two verbs gave to me, gave to somebody else. Okay, so something was given to me. Sewami, and something was given to someone else. To Newarika, to Inga Sewika. What is this Ini Liu? What is this Ini Anui? Like, why is this Ini repeated? This, I had no idea what was going on. Because what we're dealing with here is a text in the late 1500s. The language has changed since, you know, the first since the texts, the main texts that we have, the literary texts. And so grammar has changed too. Like this ending, deno, what is this verbal ending? Like, you know, this looks like a good verb, but what, what is this? So you look a little bit here to the other sequence um, in which, uh, let me just highlight this in red for the moment. Um, so you see the two sequences. It's like here also we have this dapido <coughs> and tisolo. So this clearly is a is an ending, but it's an ending that's not at all very clear because he, here it comes with the first singular I sawami, but here it's given to someone else. So like this is let's say a deteriorated ending. So we cannot deduce anything from this ending anymore. Um, this ini. Um, seems to follow the logic that we see in, in later Nubian texts as well. So where you have forms in ini and also in modern Nubian, which simply means your or your thing. So it's like an expanded type of genitive. So, okay. So your field, it's probably the object of to give. Yeah. The, the field is the thing that you give or sell. Um, okay. Uh, actually to sell, right? Jana Deno. So this is a convert construction. So where is the case? Here's a case. But what is Enga? Inga? Well, the only thing this can be is your son, Nak. 
plus a possessive prefix. So is this something like that? What they say literally is like your field, your son. So this is another or this is another word must be something like your son's field. Okay. But then we have this ini anui. And for a long time I was thinking, what is anui looking in dictionaries? What is this word? Turns out that this is just a name. Uh, attested in another Kasser Ibrahim text. So this whole thing means your son's Anui's, your son Anui's field. Accusative. It, it's the only possible reading. So you sold to me Sewamik Sewami your son Sewami's field. Why this is here, I don't know. Why it's not there. I mean, I don't I cannot say anything about why the grammar is as it is as it is. But like this repetition of you, you, you suggests that this is one thing. And and the same happens here. Inga Sewaka. Notice your perfect alpha ending predicate marked before Sewa with each other. So your other son and then the same repetition of the possessive, Leo. Your other son, Leo. So, so when, I, I, I am translating this with a past tense and, and, and using a when form. Like, I think this is a truncation of the non. So, when you gave to me, Sewami, your son's, your son Anui's field, I... Ion sold Newari to your other son. Oh. Now, the question is, Newari, is she selling her son or is she selling her son's field? Well, the answer comes in the second part where it really talks about Newarika paratanika. So Newari, his field. Newari's field. And again, look at the rep repetition of the, the accusative, like look at this resumptive pronoun. This is not standard language in the 12th century, um, but it clearly is now. Um, so once it took me such a long time to figure out these are proper names because it's always the last thing I think about because I always want things to be words because there's so many different names in Old Nubian. You can say anything is a name, but Anui is attested as a name, Leo not, but we have a name Ria, which is pretty close. Then the second part um, recapitulates. So when I, Sawami, again the word sell, sold my son Newari's field, my son Newari, his field. See again this repetition of an uh, and this accusative that's repeated. That's just so wild. But you know, it becomes distributive. My son Newari, his field. To whom? Well, to this to this first son, Anui. When I sold it, I sold, implied is of course selling here, I sold to somebody else. I sold my field to Kassa. Then the question is, what is Kassa? Well, another Kassa Ibrim text has a proper name Kassa. So when I sold my son Nevari's field. Um, I sold also my own field to Kassa. And then we have a standard, like here we go here, without denial, um, I sold the field. And then the question is, what is this Matu? Um, my suggestion is here, this is Matto, so East, Eastern. Um, the only other thing that could be Mat is affliction which really doesn't seem to be the right uh, word to use in this case. So we have Eastern here in a non-standard spelling. The only question is, what is Dapiro? And this is also fantastic. So um, in, if you look in a dictionary, it, it says to uh, destroy. <laughs> um, this is obviously not the word that we're looking for, but we know that it, it's in a convert construction with, with this janos to sell. And then if you look in a modern Nubian dictionary, you find this verb and it means to sell, to give away. So we see here the usage 
of a verb that in, let's say, classical Nubian, classical Nubian means to destroy, and we sh see the semantic shift to, to sell, and that's clearly what it means here. And so then suddenly you have this perfect, perfect sense making going on, um, where you have, when you sold your son Anui's plot of land to Misawami, I sold to your other son Leo Nawari's plot of land. And then the second part, when I, Sawami, sold my son Nawari's plot of land, I sold my own plot of land to Kassa, without denial I've sold the Eastern land. So these two things now match, like what is happening here matches here. The sale of Nawari's plot is also uh, um, indicated here. They, they also complement each other. Here we know that Nawari, we don't know who Nawari is, but here we understand it's her son. Um, here we don't know that Nawari uh, was the owner of a plot of land, but here the plot is explicitly meant. So, you know, this, this, all of this gives us, you know, a rounded, a rounded interpretation, which is, which is the only thing that we, that we really want, um, based on what we already know of the language and also what we know about the current Nubian language. So. Um, uh, when it comes to the, the influence of modern Nubian, like also when you look at this curse, which is a great curse, right? Whoever denies this in his heart, denies in his heart his son and daughter. May he cause his mother to reject him and his son to exclaim shame and leave naked in burning hot. May he hastily dress in glowing coals and leave, may he go. So this cursing with heat, I, I asked a Nubian friend, is like, do you still curse with heat? Is this something that you wish upon somebody? Uh, you know that you don't wish well. It's like yeah, yeah. We still we still use hot and and you know heat as 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 something that is unpleasant. And when you've been to Nubia and been in the desert, then indeed the heat is absolutely destructive. So uh, um, um, we know from old Nubian texts that shade and cool fresh water are really valued things and often considered blessings and protection and so on. And then here we see in the curse that like heat is like you wish heat upon your enemies. Uh, although here in the Netherlands, I would love to have a bit more heat uh, in my life because the weather is absolutely abysmal. Um, so those were the things that I found today, which is uh, it's just, just very, very exciting um, <clears throat> to see these, 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 cons these possessive constructions really complicated to to find that there's so many interesting overlaps with the Tamid text that I'm working on, this Abu Hoda uh, inscription from Griffith, this land sale, like the oldest land sale from Kasir Bream. Um, it's just it's just really, really fantastic. These these protocols that that overlap. So um, yeah, it was a really, a really productive morning and I'm really looking forward to to finish this um, finish this piece and, um, and and send it off to the Journal of Jurassic Papyrology. The, the thing I wanted to say actually about the curse was that they all, it contains some nice words that are still in modern Nubian, but not in other old Nubian text. So for example, this Joga Jaga, um, very nice, nearly onomatopoeic, where is it? Joga Jaga. In the beginning I was like, what on earth is this Joga Jaga? Um, and, um, it's uh, again like it's it's a juga juk. Here we have it in Obin to burn completely. Um, so this is this is very uh, Nelika, not attested before in Old Nubian text, but in Obin we have Nel, uh, glute or glowing coals. So uh, uh, glowing coals are like a heat, like the the, the impression of he intense heat. Um, this word orja, again, like we didn't know, this is not attested in other Nubian texts, but in Obin we have orj to put on as clothing or or dress. Um, and then uh, Mazin Khalil and, and his father told me that Mahas speaking people use this for any type of clothing, but Halfawi people only use this for shoes, right? So you see already like even between two so closely related variants of Nobin, Mahasi and, and Fadija, uh, there is already like uh, semantic distinctions that are that are starting to appear. It's really, really quite wonderful. Um, so that's it about this sale. I'm I'm just gonna finish this text maybe today, 
and then hopefully return to Tamit later this week to see if we can uh, do a bit more and get, get more grip on the text. But this text that when I first saw it, I remember so well, when I searched for this text, I thought, I do not understand a single word what is going on. And now, two years later, I have the distinct feeling that I actually understand what it says and I can argue why it says that and I have all the evidence to back up my reading of this text. So so that's, that's always beautiful. Um, all right, well, this is maybe a short video, but hope to see you again. Bye-bye.